I can already tell from the background images, from the guitars at the side <laughs> of the screen, that this is going to be a creative conversation. So I'll say welcome, everyone, to another episode of Words, Images, and Worlds. I am delighted, as I always am. Delighted seems to be my go-to word, uh, to be talking with author John Para. John, thank you for jumping in, taking some time, and talking with me. Oh, well, thank you very much for having me, Jason. It, it is a pleasure. It is a pleasure. I will start by mentioning a few titles that I know you for, and uh, pardon me as I look at my notes just to make sure that I get them all right, um, and then we'll we'll take a bit of a journey through your uh, author history. So, Round as a Tortilla would be one of those. Um, hey Wall, Green is a Chili Pepper, uh, One is a Pinata, Little Library's Big Heroes, Marvelous Cornelius, several, several, and uh, Growing an Artist, which is also a really interesting metaphor to start out with. And I'm sure you, you have several books, and I'm sure that I missed a few in that brief rundown. Uh, yeah, there's there's been a fair few over the years, but um, <laughs> mostly, yeah, those are, those are the books that I've been um, most known for, I guess, and uh, among others. But um, actually, I'm mostly the illustrator on on most of these books. So, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. for growing an artist, I was actually the author and illustrator. At first yeah. time, actually, author illustrator. Yeah, yeah, love it, love it, and and I love the authoring that occurs through images and uh, the collaborations that occur. But uh, before we get to that, curious about how you connected to books and the written word and uh, creating across languages? Um, well, I mean, I, I then I have to thank my parents, you know, my first introduction, especially my mom. My mom was a school teacher for more than 30 years and she loved books. And she, I remember her taking us to the library as a child and getting books there and reading books. So that was an important part of my, you know, literary journey as you say that those first mm -hmm. seeds being planted um and also like when you as a child you know when you're first introdu introduced to especially picture books it's also your first introduction to art sometimes mm -hmm. so i think between those two um those two things it really made a big impact and again and, and it's a lifelong journey you know to to continue to read to continue to um to have that a part of your life and um which I, I i love to have so i think reading um books um inspires you for for stories for storytelling and to get to work on these uh, work on books is 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 all part of that sort of um that author illustrator journey i, I guess yeah, love it, love it. Um, so you mentioned collaborating. You mentioned uh, taking the role of illustrator in, in many of your works. Curious about some of the most warm collaborations, uh, some of the most positive ones that you've experienced so far. Wow, my gosh, I've worked with so many wonderful um, um, authors um, over the years. Um, one of my first picture books that I got to do was called My Name is Gabriella, mm -hmm. and it has to do with a... Actually, it's a biography about a, a real life poet from Chile. Uh, her name was Gabriela Mestral, who won the Nobel Prize for her poetry. And that was written by Monica Brown. And uh, when we, this was back in 2004. Um, and when we kind of were starting out, we were sort of starting out together. She, you know, I think it was her second published book, but that story was actually, I think, one of her first. Uh, picture books that she wrote and so it was like an exciting time and so like because there was a lot of unknowns like how how this process was going to work um and so when i read her manuscript i mean it was just it was incredible it was wonderful to read and so like every time i see a you know anytime a book like when i read a good manuscript and i start seeing the pictures already in my head and as far as the artwork goes, I know this is a great story, you know, because it's it's already inspiring me. So Monica has is such a way with words and and how she describes things that that just makes me very uh, creatively. Um, I get creative ideas right away. Wow. So from that book, I I just I uh, she 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 wrote that story. So that was the first book. And even though it was kind of like I was getting my feet wet in children's books and starting to learn how the process works, uh, I really kind of cut my teeth on that project. Mm -hmm. um, but since then, uh, since then, we've worked on three books 
uh, together. There was that book, uh, Waiting for the Biblio Boro, mm -hmm. and um, and Frida Kahlo and her Animalitos was uh, was yeah. was named a New York Times uh, Best of the Year uh, illustrated book. So. She and I, over the years, have kind of collaborated multiple times, and um, and each time has been such a rewarding uh, experience. And um, now, having said that, it's interesting because when you are a children's book illustrator working with these stories, often the publisher, uh, you don't really necessarily speak to the author throughout the mm -hmm. process. It's mm -hmm. mostly the the publisher you're talking to, like the uh, the art director. Uh, or possibly edit editor. Not to say that Monica wouldn't have some sort of input um, when she saw my sketches and drawings, but it's usually not till afterwards that um, we kind of converse more about it. But because I've known Monica for so many years, um, we tend to, you know, still talk and, and kind of uh, have a conversation about the, uh, you know, future projects or anything like that that happens. Um, yeah. which is a which is a privilege but again i mean there's and those are and she's just one of so many examples that i'm just so privileged to get to work with um you know as far as authors you know because there's you know there's pat mora there's susan verde there's roseanne greenfield thong and um bill bilner and just again just again and again miranda paul just so many wonderful people um that i've i've been fortunate to work with and um and happy to work with yeah, yeah. But well, you mentioned Phil Bildner there, and uh, yeah. just a person that is not only an author, but someone who is about sharing about children's literature as well. So uh, powerful work. Yeah, his work is amazing, and 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 what he writes about and what he talks about. I mean, he really is passionate about you know kids and stories, and and but also you know just setting that positive. Um, positive path forward in, in, in talking to, to children and he believes in it. And I'm lucky to call him a friend. So, yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so when it comes to your, your art and your storytelling, what ideas, what messages, what um, inspirations do you hope to share with young readers? Um, well, most of my illustrations and my work kind of comes from um, sort of my family background. So that that's sort of uh, sort of set the, the tone for most of my books, which is sort of a Latino um, Mexican American family background. And so I've used that to sort of um, show in my books, like to be proud of who you are, where you come from. Also, culturally, I, I love to celebrate uh, the culture, um, whether it's through food or music or, or dance or, or just locations or whatever it is i just i think it's just an interesting and uh inspiring thing that i want to show um because you know when i first started off there weren't many books that were kind of showing people of color and and that kind of um that sort of background so i'm kind of proud now that um to be a part of those those stories uh among others among other stories but i mean that uh, specifically is is something i feel very proud of and um, hopefully that um, other people sort of take that baton and, and continue on with it and, mm -hmm. and, and, and share their excitement and their, and their backgrounds. And because I think it's, it's interesting. Everybody's has a story and everybody has this wonderful kind of um, backstory and, and background that they can share and talk about and we celebrate together. And, and that's, what's so wonderful about children's books is in, in stories is like those are, you know, and then we, that we learn from them and that we celebrate them. Um, and it just, it moves us in such a wonderful and positive direction. Yeah. Yeah. I love that idea of a, a literary community and yeah. sharing about yourself and getting to hear about uh, other people as well. I love that through, through books. Yeah. 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 Um, so curious about a time that you've had the chance to, uh, you could take this in, in one of two ways, either interact with a young reader or uh, maybe a time that you've created something and it's been uh, just a really positive moment as you've been creating for young readers. Um, so a project that you, a specific project you would say, or, mm -hmm. or, or interaction or interaction. Well, 
Um, one of the wonderful things, kind of unexpected things um, out of getting to do children's books is that I get to visit and do a lot of school visits or mm -hmm. uh, literary conferences um, where I get to meet people and talk to them. And it just sometimes even maybe hopefully inspire what they're working on. And um, in fact, I just received an email this week uh, from a school visit I did in Brooklyn um, about two weeks ago uh, where I had this conversation with this uh, a fifth grader, a young fifth grader who was interested in art and writing. And, and then the email came back and, and seeing how, how inspired this, uh, that conversation was to her. And now she's writing and she's, she's working on her own thing. So those moments like that, that just, it means the world to me. I mean, it means it's, I mean, it, you know, for anybody to be lucky enough to be in my position, I, I'm just so grateful that that happens. And, and I'm sure as you as a teacher, we have the the power to impact people and young students, especially to to maybe help them reach their potential, their creativity, their ideas and their goals, you know, okay. not in the mold, my mold, but in their mold and, you know, what their interests are and where they are are thinking. And so if I can have a play a small um, part in that story, um, it just, it's, it's an incredible feeling to have. And, and, and again, over the years, I've done hundreds of, hundreds of presentations and it's so much fun and the excitement and the enthusiasm people have. And, and, and when you, when you come and do these presentations, it's, it's just incredible. Um, other other projects I, I would say that kind of meant a lot. I, I actually got to do stamps for the U.S. Post Office, oh, and nice. uh, yeah, which was a, which was a lot of fun. So a little bit outside of the the children's book area, mm -hmm. but again, just the response that you receive um, when you do a project like that is 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 wonderful. And the project had to do with uh, Latino food, and there were six stamps, and so people were talking to me because I feel like also food brings people together. Yeah. Um, when you sit, when you sit down, especially, you know, we're in the holidays now and we sit down and we share stories. It's often when we sit down to eat and, 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 you know, have a glass of, you know, whatever your preferred beverage. And so it's sort of, it's sort of like a, kind of like a nice um, way to bring people together. And I like that. I like that art can unite people, bring people together, um, have people to have discussions about things um, in a positive way. Um, even if somebody's from here or from there, it, it, it doesn't matter. We can kind of come together and, and kind of share ideas and thoughts. And I think that's just wonderful. I think that's what art and, and reading and, and, and books and, and, and people's just can do. And so to me, that's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Um, and so I, I think I have one more official question and then we can hit <laughs> anything that we might've missed. And that is uh, creative directions you're exploring right now, anything in the world of creating that you can talk about as well as spaces where if someone out there wants to connect with you for a school visit or follow along with your work or see some examples, um, things of that nature. Well, definitely you can, you can go to my website there, johnparart.com. There's, there's information about my, my work and also about the school visits. Um, and right now, of course, I'm, I'm working on multiple, <laughs> multiple projects. I think I have uh, three books I'm currently working on. Um, oh, wow. One I finished. Yeah. One I finished. One is uh, coming out next year. It's, um, it's with author Margarita Engel and it's called Eloisa's uh, Musical Window. Love it, and, love um, and then uh, there's two books I'm writing and illustrating. So I am continuing to write and illustrate more uh, new books. Uh, one of the books is sort of a Day of the Dead inspired book. Um, and, then, uh, and then there's another book that I'm working on um, about uh, Fernando Valenzuela, who was a pitcher for the, for the Los Angeles Dodgers uh, many years ago and uh, my, one of my childhood heroes. So I, I really love working on those types of books, um, especially biographies. I'm sort of drawn to bi biographies. Um, I'm also going to be in Fresno, uh, California. I'm going to be there in February at the Fresno Art Museum and um, um, at a, let's see, I wrote it down here, Arte Americas uh, Museum in Fresno uh, to present there because I have a show of my work um, at the museum and should be at the Tempe Museum, uh, Tempe Festival of Books. 
Um, I'm also working with the uh, Smithsonian of the American Latino to possibly do a presentation oh, <laughs> in wow. Oklahoma. So that's exciting. And it's mm -hmm. just, again, it's just 2024 is going to be an ex <laughs> another exciting year for sure. And lots of um, projects and, and creativity. And I love staying busy. And I love, again, you know, kind of having that balance of, meeting meeting people and and especially young creative people and also working on wonderful projects and and getting to do those things so those are all everything that's kind of coming <laughs> coming up fast actually uh <laughs> in the new year so i have to kind of keep my head down and, and work hard on those things yeah yeah well well wishing you a wonderful time of holidays hopefully food um so, some wonderful creative time and then also a wonderful new year as as all of this comes to be uh well thank you very much yeah thank you so much john and, and glad to talk to you anytime thank you